Elizabeth Holmes. Grace Tech entrepreneur Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos. Tonight, the epic rise and downfall of disgraced Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes has come to an end. So, over the last few years, you might have heard news about the emergence and downfall of a supposed groundbreaking medical device company and the founder Elizabeth Holmes. A company that had backing from a variety of private equity firms in the form of hundreds of millions of dollars to eventually being worth over $9 billion in the next big step for humanity. Holmes asserted that the Edison device could execute a wide spectrum of common biochemical analyses claiming that this new technology, with just a single drop of blood, could simultaneously look at lipid profiles, electrolyte concentrations, hormone levels, enzyme activities, and specific protein biomarkers indicative of a variety of medical conditions. This kind of breakthrough would allow for early detection and monitoring of diseases, ranging from metabolic disorders to infectious diseases and even malignancies. You could even do a diagnostic test for cocaine if you really wanted. This at the time in the field of healthcare was a huge step in the right direction, as most of these sorts of procedures took quite a bit of time to execute and analyze. One of the big hurdles Theranos aimed to overcome was to expedite the more laborious aspects of medicine, and by positioning the Edison Mini Lab within community health centers, clinics, pharmacies, and having it constantly relay results and information back and forth with the TVA, Holmes envisioned a transformative shift in healthcare accessibility, streamlining diagnostics and facilitating prompt medical decision making. And this was a huge deal. Who wouldn't want all of their blood work right away instead of having to wait days or weeks for results? How long is this going to take? But let's remember that these were all claims made by Theranos and this fantasy land scenario of performing hundreds of simultaneous tests only exists in reality if the product actually works, which we know it didn't. Right, and we delete outliers. Most of us know how this story ends, that her Edison box failed to fulfill the commitments she initially asserted, and her groundbreaking medical outcomes were fabricated over an extended duration to sustain her delusional ambitions. But to start off, we actually don't even have to look inside the box to get an idea of how far her delusion really ran. Let's take a look at the blood draw video that was released by Theranos. It was supposed to demonstrate the convenience and efficiency of the Edison machine, but there's a reason why most blood is collected through venous blood sampling and not with a tiny pinprick at the tip of your fingers. The potential for sample contamination is so much higher when drawing blood from superficial areas like your fingertips that unless you're doing a simple test to measure your blood sugar, you'll likely end up with horribly inaccurate results. Blood tests are sometimes done to look for markers for diseases like cancer or heart disease. When you draw blood from the fingertip capillaries, there's a high chance that a lot of the blood cells that you're drawing in these little nanotainers have been subject to something called hemolysis, or the bursting of red blood cells. You can kind of see this happen in the video as the lab technician jams the cartridge into the patient's fingers to fill the nanotain. When a red blood cell pops, one of the inside components it releases is potassium. This surge of potassium into the bloodstream creates a sudden increase in that ion's concentration which, if severe enough, can trigger something called hyperkalemia, which causes some pretty disruptive cardiac issues like messing with the electrical signals that control heart rhythm. If we look at the actual insides of the Edison box, you can see why people may have been initially impressed with it all. You have what looks like a full lab's worth of equipment to both process the blood sample and detect the necessary components. Every single day, someone's life is better because they can afford access to health information they couldn't afford before, and they begin to get tested in time to improve outcomes. You had a detection model that could run 64 different reactions at once. You had your own personal centrifuge for component separation, and you even had your own spectrophotometer for substance concentrations. To perpetuate the legitimacy of all of this, Elizabeth gave a presentation on the Edison and its capabilities back in 2016 with the goal of showing everyone how accurate and revolutionary her tech already was and was going to be. According to Theranos, the Edison, when compared to an industry standard, Why haven't we broken into the Siemens machine? was able to give accurate results in all of the different tests it had run. If it was testing for fats and cholesterol, it was accurate. If it was testing for white blood cell levels, it was accurate, and if it was testing for disease markers, it was, again, accurate. 
you presented potassium data from your venous sticks, but not from your capillary. Yeah. So what's up? Elizabeth responded by surprise, surprise, not answering the question at all, but instead talking about how Theranos wanted to use the presentation to showcase the newest iteration of the Edison Mini Lab technology, and that there was still more work to be done. And of course, investigations revealed that these assertions were significantly exaggerated and in many instances fabricated. The clinical accuracy of the Edison device was not substantiated by empirical evidence, and the resultant inaccuracies and inconsistencies compromised its reliability as a legitimate diagnostic tool. The dissonance between the marketed promises of Theranos and the device's actual capabilities ultimately led to legal repercussions for Holmes and Theranos, shedding light on the importance of scientific rigor and ethical accountability within the realm of medical technology advancement.